Over the years, there's been a lot of requests for more information about how we've made the candles from our haunt. So in this video, I'm going to break down how they're made, how they're wired, and the secret trick that really sells the effect. But first, a bit of background. About eight years ago, I had finally reached the end of my rope for replacing the cell batteries that most store-bought flickering pillar candles come with, because I'd forgotten to turn them off at the end of the night. So I set out to make a few different sized candles from resin that would pass enough light, be sturdy enough for years of outdoor haunt use, and most importantly, look the part. And here's where I landed. These three candles are made of translucent resin, are wired up to the 12 volt RCA jack lighting system that our entire haunt runs on, and are outfit with either one or two flickering LEDs depending on their size. For those wondering, this is the power supply that we most often use, and it easily powers 30 to 40 LED bulbs. The candles have a small hole drilled through the bottom to accommodate the LED bulbs, which are held in place with a bit of hot glue. This is done to keep the bulb secure and to protect it from any moisture or rain that we might get in October that will pool in the bottom of the candle. A bit of extra glue over the top of the bulb will help to diffuse the light as well. What's great about these candles is that they can be paired up using these small RCA splitters, which come in a few different varieties, so that you're not stuck having to run an individual power cord to each candle. Now that you know the basics, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. We use an additional light source that's not inside the candle that's used to create even more glow. After using these candles for a few years, I realized they were still a bit lacking. So after reading up about practical and motivated lighting, I fell down the internet rabbit hole and came across a small piece of affordable lighting tech that when combined with a new understanding of lighting techniques, really made these candles stand out. If you saw our mini LED spotlight video, these will look familiar. It's a small amber LED spot that puts out a decent amount of light. When used with the candles, which are a practical light source, they act as motivated light to give the candles a bit of help. What helps even more is when you incorporate what I like to call a modifier that turns this static spotlight into an animated one. I found these small LED light modules online a few years ago that are designed specifically for creating the look of candle or firelight. They have multiple flickering patterns and both the speed and brightness can be adjusted. By adding on the proper connections for your setup at both ends means you can run them in line with your other lights and have multiple lights all animated off of a single unit. So it's the combined look of the warm glow of the mini spotlight and the LED glow seen through the translucent resin that produces the most visually appealing look. Okay, enough talking about it, let's take a look at it in action. Here are the candles with just the internal flicker bulbs. You can see they put off a decent amount of light, but if there's other light sources in your haunt, they could easily get lost. Now let me add in the flickering spotlight. Being able to accentuate your practical lighting with some motivated light can help to create visual interest on props and in scenes that the candles alone wouldn't be able to do. It's a great way to direct the eye towards elements that may be more important or as a means of distraction before a scare. That'll do it for this one. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe, give it a like, and hit the notification bell to get an alert when we put out the next video. And until then, go make something.